Hello and welcome to Run 11. Today, we're going to be seeing how much fun you can have in something fake and something hated. Let's roll. Hello and welcome to the latest vlog from Run 11 with me, Sean. Today, we're going to be tinkering around with this wonderful 924 behind me and that awesome 356 homage as well. Now I say homage because this particular car is in fact, like its original ancestor, based on the Beetle. But let's be honest, who wants to actually drive a million pound car hard everywhere? I know I'd be scared. So that's one of the benefits of this and we're gonna be touching upon that very, very soon. Also, the 924, first transaxle car. A lot of people throw a lot of shade and hate towards it, which I think is completely unfair. Because look, pop up headlights, how cool. So first up, we take the 356 for a drive through the wonderful countryside of Rygate. <laughs> so what we have here is a 356 homage, a chisel body on a Beetle floor plan. 1600cc engine out the rear. It feels like there's nothing else apart from me putting every input into this car. I thought my 996 was pretty pure with just ABS and power steering. You don't need power steering in this, it's so light. Fantastic. Brakes work, which is handy. So on the subject of real and fake, a real 356 is gonna cost you quite a sum of money. And I don't know about you, I don't have that kind of money, first of all. Second of all, of the upkeep. And the upkeep's the, the concerning thing, right? If something goes wrong, or you've got a period piece, and you want period correct parts, it's gonna cost a lot of floose, you know? But with this, no way is it like owning a Rolex that ticks. This, you can have your cake and eat it. A wicked car. <laughs> Which begs the question, I know a lot of people are not fans of kit cars, because essentially it's a kit car, yeah? Chez will make kit cars based on Beetles, on Beetle floor plans, with Beetle engines. But that's what the car was kind of based on back in the day. It wasn't a, you know, a full, re uh, like brand new, all new parts car, Ferry Porsche didn't have that kind of dollar. You know, when he made the first few cars, that was made in Gmund in Austria. First car sold to a lady from Zurich. A couple of years later, they moved everything to Zuffenhausen, Stuttgart, where the legend continued. Cars were hand built, much like kit cars. Find the gear. <laughs> It's as real as the original in that effect. I'm not gonna get into the engineering side of things, the differences between the, 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 sick, uh, the flat four on this comparative to the original 356. There's plenty more videos about that. For me, it's the feeling. Now this vehicle is available through a company in Surrey called RNG Classics. So you can rent one of these. I'm absolutely in love with this car. I am currently doing about 30 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm not going fast, but it's fast enough. And it's just, there's a tra tractor in front. It's not because I'm scared, all right? But it's just like, this thing just kicks ass. <laughs> what a car, what a car. A question for you. Now I know you can't answer straight away, but you can comment in the box below. Would you, love to run an homage, consider it, call it a fake, whatever you want to do. Because after this, I would run a car like this. It's firm, but then I'm expecting that, you know, 
Yes, it's based on the 1970s Beetle, but it's still 50 years old almost. It's small as well, so it's not gonna be as pliable like that, but it all adds to it. There's so much you feel going through this car. I wonder if a genuine 356 is gonna feel like this. So if you know someone who has a genuine 356 or you have a genuine 356, not to rub salt in the wounds to say you could have saved yourself some dollar, because I get the idea behind why you'd want to own an original. Don't, come on, man. It, it makes perfect sense to want to, because it's a genuine slice of history. But if you want something that you get the same feeling from, those kinesthetic people out there, this is your, this is your ticket to that, man. We find a place to park up in town for the switch. That was a 356 homage. This, believe it or not, I've actually been really looking forward to, even more so than the 356, right? Now, I know what you're thinking. But Sean, the 924, isn't that the most disliked and bland Porsche ever? To you, it might be. To me, it's a very important car to drive. My dad had a 924, just a regular one, like this. And for me, this is an opportunity to kind of experience what he experienced. Because when he had it, he never let me drive it. And I asked him years later, like, why did you never let me drive the car? And he was like, I don't know. This is night and day compared to the 356. This actually, my God, what a daily car. It's glorious already. So easy to drive. Let's do some basics on this. So two liter, four cylinder. 125 horsepower, transaxle car, which means, just as it sounds, the transmission and the axle are one. The engine is at the front, whilst drive is from the rear. Now, I know you think that, oh, but isn't a two litre from a van? Well, around the same time as the engine was released, it was actually the unit they put in here was from the Audi 100 at the time, the mid 70s, and then this, engine also found its way into the LT Volkswagen. Now the history behind this, this was actually going to be badge the Volkswagen. And you know, it would have been amazing really. So they co-developed this with Porsche. Porsche took care of the chassis and the body, engines, transmission and drive shaft, which is from a Beetle, all came from Volkswagen group themselves. And at the time, Volkswagen was just two businesses, Volkswagen and Audi. Audi was the brand they grabbed hold of in the mid 60s. McPherson struts up front, multi-point trailing arms at the rear with a near perfect 50-50 weight distributions, 48 front, 52 rear. The first impressions of this car, and one of the things I love about it is little details here, okay? So we've got the Porsche script on the door, right? And that looks like proper, you know. And inside, it's a great cabin. I am firmly in the seat, wicked tombstone seats. I wouldn't choose brown, but hey, it's period perfect, I suppose. And it feels very Porsche, but at the same time, what you'd expect from a Volkswagen, easy to drive, it is fairly easy to drive. I mean, this is a perfect, classic to run as a daily, dare I say it. I know you're going to think that 125 horses isn't much to really shout home about. This was a car that came out in the mid 70s. And it's not all about power. If anything has taught me and taught us the driving fraternity, you can have just as much fun with an engaging car with an awesome gearbox like this one has, and great chassis dynamics. I want to address the hate that a 924 gets because I think it's unfounded, but it's definitely something that you hear and see a lot from the outside, from people who may not necessarily understand Porsches or just see it from an outside perspective. It's very similar to what people say about the Boxster. And hear me out on this. The 924 was never made to replace the 911. That was a 928's job. That's another story another time but it was meant to be an entry-level car, an entry-level Porsche 
that anyone could get themselves you know involved in it wasn't pricey i think there was a price of 20,000 deutschmarks which bought into the car the car was reliable you know you had the engine transmission you had tried and tested parts from other volkswagen vehicles and audi vehicles at the time it's a sports car which allows you to have fun much in the same way as the boxster now the boxster handles differently to the 911 this handles differently to the 911 the engines at the front whilst you know power is transmitted to the rear so you've got that perfect weight distribution as we already addressed i'm sure if this had more power maybe something akin to the dare i say it 924 turbo or later on the carrera gt it would scare the crap out of a 911 and too right but there's a real purity to this car no assisted systems no power steering disc brakes front drums rear and a really nice torquey engine i can understand why my dad enjoy driving this i've already forgotten about absolute power or acceleration and it's a feel it feels very different to the 356 the only thing they share is a drive shaft and the name but it's brilliant gateway into driving something that is so 70s also let's talk about the cool thing about this car those pop-up headlights of the period a couple of ferraris which were quite high end at the time but if we're talking about entry-level cars rx7 924 lotus esprit triumph tr7 sorry but apologies just triumph to you one of them there weren't many i would love to be able to have the opportunity to get on the blower to my dad tell him i drove a 924 finally and tell him i'll never give him the keys either i wouldn't mind one of these because it's classic it's easy to drive it's period perfect i would love to play around with one there was this awesome one that was white with gas coilovers and these wicked three-piece wheels nice chubby tires the offset was perfect on the wheels quite girthy and they sit close to the arches and they look the business you know i wouldn't stick on bolted arches or anything like that or make it look like an homage for a gtr and dare i say i probably wouldn't keep the original lump could be a lot of fun That was awesome. It doesn't matter if you go for a car that is, let's say, not real, is a kit car or something that's an homage to something else because I don't know about you, I don't have a spare 300,000 pound where I can shell out on a classic 356. And to be fair, after the stuff that we did with the 356 and the 924, I don't think I'd want to do it to that, but I'd feel less worried and concerned especially about doing it to a replica and that's the thing you know it allows you to have fun and kind of see the whole point of what porsche's vision was back in the day making a simple light car that you're able to race on sunday and drive on monday the car was sublime to drive there were moments where i couldn't feel anything underneath and although normally I'd be a bit concerned, it added to the fun, it made it special, a really special drive. For me though, the car I would take out of the two would be the 924. Now I know what you're thinking, a 924, Sean, are you crazy? But let's be honest, it's such an easy car to drive. Front engine, rear wheel drive, it's a manual five-speed gearbox. It's got all the benefits of a Volkswagen and plus the benefits of a Porsche. The handling is bang on you know it felt incredibly direct when i was sat in the 924 i actually felt lower to the ground than my 996 does maybe it needs a bit more power but that's something that can be remedied easily but as an entry-level porsche it's incredible what a piece of kit also you get to have fun like this
truth is, if you want to have fun, especially in a Porsche, don't listen to the naysayers. Try them yourself. And you have an opportunity to try both these cars through RNG Classics. Make sure you mention Ren 11 to them and they'll look after you. Thank you so much for watching today's vlog. If you enjoy these vlogs and you want to see some more, see the latest one just up here. Also, I do some unplugged conversations where it's just me, a microphone in my 9.6. And if you'd like to see some of them, they're over here. And lastly, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you know exactly when the latest video is out. Thank you so much. Be safe, be good, and much love.